So here we have two strands of DNA. And when we look at one of these little nucleotides, like this right here, this arrow is representing the, phos the phosphate group. This is the nitrogen base. So in this case, this yellow one is a T. And then right here, this would represent the sugar. So if I were to look at this nucleotide, oops, like this, then this part is the five prime end and down here is the three prime end. So when I look at my double helix that I have here on the table, I can see that um, this part with the arrow is the part that represents the phosphate group. So here's my five prime end and then here's the three prime end. At the other side, Here's the three prime and the five prime because DNA is anti-parallel. So we have a couple enzymes that are responsible for replicating our DNA. And at first, um, we're gonna have an enzyme called topoisomerase. Now topoisomerase is going to kind of like loosen the double helix and kind of uh, relieve some pressure of that double helix. And then we're gonna have an enzyme called helicase so helicase is going to basically unzip. So we can kind of draw it as like an arrow right here. So this would be helicase. And helicase is what's gonna open up our DNA and break the hydrogen bonds. We still have our three prime and our five prime ends. So our, our replication fork is actually going in this direction here. So that's the direction of our growing replication fork. Now, what we need to do is we first need to figure out, um, in real life, you would have single-stranded binding proteins that are holding open this double helix. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a Play-Doh helicase to hold this open. So there's our helicase. Now, uh, we need to figure out which strand of the new ones. So when we talk about building a complementary um, sequence, here T pairs with A, C, G, T like this. However, um, we don't just start adding. This is going to be with enzymes. So you need to figure out, because DNA is built from 5 prime to 3 prime uh, and can only, um, DNA polymerase 3 can only add on to the 3 prime end, you have to see which of your new strands is built in that direction. So if this end is a three prime end, the new strand is gonna be a five on um, here, and then this will be the three. So it's gonna be built in this direction. Now a common mistake I see is that people take this existing strand and they see the three right here, and they think, oh, then this side's a five. Here's gonna be my lagging strand built in the opposite direction. However, that's not the case. It's whatever the new strand is. So here, this one is gonna be built continuously. So as helicase unzips, we can just keep on building and adding to that three prime end. We call this the leading strand. And then over here on this one, you have our five prime end. So our new strand is gonna have a three prime to five prime. So that is actually gonna be built in the opposite direction of the replication fork. So this is called our lagging strand. And it's built in fragments called Okazaki fragments. So as we go ahead and build, um, there's a limit to DNA polymerase three. DNA polymerase three is the enzyme that will be doing the base pairing rules and adding the growing nucleotides. However, DNA polymerase three has to attach to an existing three prime end. So if you have your, your nucleotide, this is the three prime end right here. So it has to attach to that three, to an existing three prime end. So lucky for us, there's an enzyme called primase. Primase is going to build primers. So a primer is going to be built out of RNA nucleotides. So here I have um, some white uracils. Now, RNA, when it attaches to DNA, is also anti-parallel. So right here, I had it possibly pointing in this direction, but the same 
way that new strands of DNA are added, anti-parallel is the same for RNA. So then here, we have our five prime end of the RNA nucleotide, and there's the three prime end. So here we have now an existing, this represents the primer. In real life, it'd be multiple nucleotides, not just one. But here we have this three prime end. So now, DNA polymerase three, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. DNA polymerase three, can come and attach to this um, three prime end and then build the growing strand of um, DNA based on base pairing rules where it's complementary. So here I'd have a new nucleotide added to the three prime end here. C pairs with G. Here's my next base pairing, et cetera. And it would just continue. And in real life, as the replication fork continues, to unravel, like as the helicase continues to move in this direction, DNA polymerase three will continue to add. Now on the lagging strand, DNA polymerase three is also the enzyme that builds the lagging strand. However, it has to, the lagging strand is built in the opposite direction of the replication fork, but it also needs a primer because of the limits to DNA polymerase three. So here, will come in and the enzyme primase will add that RNA primer. So you have the RNA primer here and now I have this three prime end and then DNA polymerase three can attach to the three prime end and build the complementary sequence. Based on base pairing rules. So Oops, when we do this um, here, the, I should point out that the C's and the G's are held together by three hydrogen bonds, whereas the A's and the T's are held together by two hydrogen bonds, and then the sugars and phosphates are held together by phosphodiester bonds. So when I just built these um, red, blue, green, etc., these nucleotides that are DNA nucleotides, they were built by DNA polymerase three. So now, as helicase continues to unwind and continues to break these bonds, we have more of these DNA nucleotides exposed to allow further building of our complementary bases. So DNA polymerase three is still gonna build these complementary strands. So here you have, um, I'm adding on to the three prime end. So I can add on to the three prime end continuously. This is our leading strand, remember. And I'm just gonna move these fives and three since it moved up. So here I have my leading strand being built continuously. Now over here, uh, I need to add a new primer. And so with this, um, I guess we're just gonna end up with two fragments today. So here um, I would come in and build uh, the enzyme again, primase is gonna build this primer. And then, so here's another RNA nucleotide, then DNA polymerase three can come and do base pairing rules, because here's that three prime end of the primer. So then here you have, oops, base pairing. Now if you do make a mistake, if DNA polymerase three makes a mistake, so let's pretend right here, this happens, that is called a point mutation. That is one mutation, and that's how um, mutations happen when there's mistakes in DNA replication. Okay, so now here we keep on going. Now eventually, you're gonna get to that previous fragment. So um, what we see in our DNA here is that there's actually, so DNA polymerase built this, DNA polymerase three. So now we have, uh, polymerase three needs to finish continuing building this side. So here we have our complementary base pairs to finish out our strand. And then what we find when we look at this um, strand here is that there's actually RNA primers. So another enzyme called DNA polymerase one is gonna come and remove the primers. Now, unfortunately I finished and I, I separated these, but in reality, like 
it'll remove the primers along the way as it's going. My strands are just kind of short to show that. So DNA polymerase one is gonna remove this RNA nucleotide and replace it with the complementary DNA nucleotide. And then this bond right here though, this phosphodiester bond is gonna be sealed by the enzyme called ligase. So ligase will seal this phosphodiester bond here. Um, now, when we look at the ends of our chromosomes, oh, DNA polymerase one will also remove this primer. And so here uh, we find there is a section missing right here. There's no nucleotide there and here. And that's because DNA polymerase one and three cannot add to this five prime end. So therefore, every time your cells uh, replicate, your chromosomes get a little bit shorter. Now we have finished. So if I compare these, you find that you have two identical copies of DNA. And really the enzymes again involved, you had your helicase that unzipped it. You had your topoisomerase that kind of loosened it. You had primase built the primers. DNA polymerase three did the matching with the complementary bases. DNA polymerase one removed the RNA primers and replaced them with DNA nucleotides, and then ligase sealed those phosphodiester bonds. Now our lagging strand is um, built in, those fragments are called Okazaki fragments. Now if we clean this up just a little bit, we can identify our five prime and our three prime ends. So then here we have our three prime, five prime, three prime, five prime, et cetera. And you can see that with the exception to the ends, that you have two identical strands.